In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. So, uh, as you all know that every new year, um, uh, we have like a, a message or uh, something that can uh, direct us uh, for the coming year. And uh, this year, uh, the, the theme is coming from uh, this verse, Draw me and we will run after you. Draw me and we will run after you. It is a verse in the book of the Song of Songs. And uh, the book of the Song of Songs, as you know, is uh, uh, they call it the Holy of Holies of the Bible because it is the core of the love of God for humans and humans' uh, uh, response to the love of God. And this verse is actually the soul or the church is calling the Lord to draw me. Draw me and we will run after you. Uh, so it is like a prayer. Uh, attract me to yourself and I will not just come. We will come and we will come running to you. I'm not going to come alone, but I'm going to come with others, and that's why the answer is, we will run after you. The one word that we will focus on in this verse is the run, the running, Nagri. And the question is, am I running in my spiritual life, or am I walking, or am I crawling? And that's a good question that we ask ourselves. And when there is a time to run, you cannot walk. Because when you walk during the time of running, then you will miss out. There is a time for everything under heaven, as the Bible says. So this is a time of running, not the time of walking. And in order to do this running, he has to do the part of attract me or draw me. But we will discuss a few things. Why do we need to run in our spiritual life? Not just walk. You know, sometimes we have to walk, but sometimes we have to run. I need to run because there isn't enough time. I need to mature spiritually. How long will this take? I need to reach the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. How long will this take? You know, day after day and year after year, time is running quickly. And not only that, but as we see the time is becoming difficult day after day, and we approach the, 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 the time of the end, this time of the end will be a difficult time. It's not going to be an easy time. So in order to stand firm during this difficult time, then I need to be steadfast. You know, the Lord said that I need to be steadfast because during this time, even the elect will not stand. The ten versions, the parable of the ten versions that the Lord Jesus gave about the, the end time. This parable says that there are ten versions, five wise, five foolish. Wise versions, they took oil with them. Five foolish, they took oil also. The foolish versions, they took oil. And they were virgins, they were good people. They took oil, they had lamps, the lamps was, uh, uh, was running, but they didn't take enough oil. The wise versions took extra oil with them. Why? Because they were not walking. They were running. They were not walking the same walk. They were not keeping the same oil that people always had. But they had something extra because the time needed that. The one commandment regarding the end is watch. Watch, be alert, be careful how you walk and how you run. What we're praying that God would give us the sense of urgency that will draw me, that will make me run towards Him. 
There was a, a nice story of uh, one of the saints that had like an apparition. Something appeared to him and said, you have 50 years to live. And his response was, only 50 years? I have to run. I have to double my prayers. The time is never going to be enough. I will not be saved. Uh, I need to run. And that was a, a, a very moving thing for him. And they say that at the same day, at the end of the day, his soul was taken away. Apparently, this apparition was the devil is trying to tell him, relax, don't worry. You think that the Lord will ever give us a time or give us a message? Take your time. Relax spiritually. You know, it's not the end of the world. If you don't do it today, there is many good days to come. I don't think this will ever be uh, the Lord's message for us. But the people who have discernment, they were able to say that, no, I don't have enough time. And as we go day after day, time becomes scarce, becomes, you know, uh, uh, if you were busy today, uh, uh, look at two, three, five years ago. You know, every year we get busier and busier and our commitments almost double. I need to mature spiritually. I need to reach the image of the Lord Jesus Christ and that will not read, need walking but need running. The other reason why I need to run is because I have people that I'm responsible for. I have my kids if I'm a parent. I have spiritual children if I am a servant. I have people around me who are taking me as an example. Believe me, if you walk, people after you will crawl. And if you run, people after you, behind you, may just walk. So uh, if I am in a, in a place of responsibility, then this puts a responsibility over me. That's why I need to pray this prayer, draw me near and we will run. The beautiful thing about this verse that says, draw me, exhibit me, Anna, and we will run. So if you draw me, I will never come alone, but I will bring others with me. I will bring others with me. And that's what is said in the psalm. The virgins, her companions who follow her shall be brought to you. They was said about uh, a virgin Mary who brought so many virgins, so many people after her. It was said about every committed soul to the Lord that when the soul is reaching, is, is attracted to the Lord, is growing in Him, will always bring others. But if this soul is relaxed, I'm sure the people will be relaxed much more. If I have followers, if I have dependents, if I have people that rely on me for example, for spiritual protection, for guidance, for a model, then I cannot walk. I need to run. Exactly. The third reason why we need to run, because the Father is actually eager for me. I know that if you see someone, like you're, you're walking in a street, and you see someone running. You know, running is not a, is not a nice thing to do. You know, when, when you're running in the street, people will, will think like, what's wrong with this person, right? You know, if you walk, nobody's going to talk to you. But if you run, people will look at you, look at this person, what's, what's wrong with him? And uh, to be honest with you, a lot of times also, we think that if I run spiritually, it will be a little bit weird and awkward with others. But believe it or not, who is the one who runs? If you think that we should run, you know who is the one who runs? <clears throat> I'll read this verse for you to know who is the person who's running. You know, when the prodigal son came, what did the father do? He arose and came to his father, that's the prodigal son, but when he, the father, was still a great way off, his father saw him, had compassion, and, eh, and what? Ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. This old 
respectful man who represents God the Father was running. The prodigal son was coming, huh, walking and dragging his feet. But who is the one who was running? The father, this old man. Why? The son is coming. Relax. Why, why is he running? The son is going to come. Just, just be patient. Like a few seconds he will be here. The father is saying, I can't wait. I don't want the few seconds to separate me from my son. I'm in a hurry. This is the heart of the father. He runs. <clears throat> and if you don't believe this one, I'll give you another one, just in case. That's the chaos. Another lost man. Jesus saw him on the tree, okay? And he was telling him to come down from the tree. You know, imagine someone not on a tree, even on a ladder. When you tell him, come down from the ladder, what do you tell him? Just careful, step by step. But Jesus didn't say that. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make, huh? make haste. Asra, wanzil, make haste and come down for today I must stay at your house. If someone is coming down from a tree, do you tell him, make haste? No. Why is Jesus telling him, him that? He wants to break his neck? I don't think so. Make haste and come down. Why? These seconds. I don't want these seconds to separate me from the one. That, he is the one who's running. That is the heart of God. You know. But of course, <clears throat> our heart is heavy, relaxed, you know, very stressed out and everything else. But when it comes to spiritual life, relax. If I don't do it now, you know, we have many days to come. Not necessarily. The key to running is the word that was said in the beginning, draw me. مفتاح الجري الأجري دوت اجذبني. هو ده اللي احنا عايزين نطلبه اجذبني. Draw me. Draw me and we will run after you. Attract me to yourself. Once I taste the divine love, I can never walk. I will have to run. Once I taste the divine love, I can no longer walk, but I have to run. And actually, it, the, 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 the walking spiritually and not running is a sign of the lukewarmness and not really tasting that divine love because once I see that, once I am touched by this divine fire, I will have to run. Attract me, draw me, and we will run. One thing that a lot of times we lose uh, sight of and we don't remember is what is the purpose of our relationship with God? Why did God create us to start with? How does he want the relationship to be? Because a lot of times the relationship becomes a, a business relationship. You know, day after day, routine, and a, a, a lot of uh, uh, things to pray for, lots of problems, lots of this, lots of that, lots of busyness, and the relationship becomes a, a, a business relationship with God, cold relationship. But we lose sight of the main reason why God created us, because He wanted to have a love relationship with us. And if the love is missing from this relationship, if the attraction is not there, if I'm not attracted to Him, then there is something about this love relationship with Him. Remember, the angel of the church in Ephesus was a very di diligent uh, uh, angel or leader of the church. And what did God tell him? He said, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works. عندي عليك إنك تركت محبتك الأولى. قال له أنا عارف صبرك وتعبك وكل اللي أنت بتعمله بس 
That's not what I, what I was looking for. I did not create you to do tasks. Not even to serve. Not even to serve. Not, not even to give to the poor. It's great to give to the poor. It's great to pray. It's great to do all these things, but that's not how I created you to do. I have the angels, they can pray, they can praise me, but I created you to be my bride. And I'm the bridegroom. I created you for that. And if we lose sight of that love relationship and there is no attraction, something huge is missing. The main goal of the relationship is missing. The book of the Song of Songs that has this verse has <clears throat> this saying, For love is as strong as death, jealousy as cruel as the grave. Its flames are flames of fire, a most women flame. Many waters cannot quench love, nor can the floods draw, uh, drown it. If a man would give for love all his wealth of his house, it would be utterly despised. And, and I will focus on the last part. If a man would give for love, yeah, instead of love, he would give all the wealth of his house, it will be utterly despised. That's a very strong word. Imagine someone gave up everything, his house, his money, everything to God. But he's missing the love. Not only God would say, thank you, you know, I would rather love. He said, it will be utterly despised. I missed the whole point. If the attraction is not there, if the love relationship is not there, the whole point of the relationship is missing. One time, God was saying that in, in Jeremiah to the children of Israel. He said, I remember you. The kindness of your youth, the love of your betrothal. When you went after me in the wilderness, in a land not sown. If God would remember anything throughout your history, your history, from the day you were born till now, that's what he remembers. The time of love, time of betrothal with God, the love relationship, that's what he is looking for. Running is a natural reaction to love. If there is love, there is running. Draw me, and we will run. Attract me, and we will run. If there is love relationship, the person will run. And God will never let go of that. He will never change love with anything else. He doesn't want anything else, and he doesn't want anything less than love. Now, the question is, how can I get this love relationship or this attraction to him? How can I get the attraction to the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? How can I build that? How can I make sure that I'm in that right track? <clears throat> few things. The first one that I have to empty first, which empty the inside, or in other words, separate from the world uh, that is owning my heart. Basically, the heart is full of stuff. And as long as the heart is full of the stuff of this world, the heart can never love God. Okay? <clears throat> I know that there is a misconception. And the misconception is, when God draws me, when God helps me, when God puts his love in me, then I will be running. And I will live all my life just waiting for that time that God will work in my life and I will run. Right? I'm waiting for, for the good time to come when, uh, you know, maybe when work goes down, where, when the, you know, situation becomes much better, and then... I will grow in my spiritual life. Absolutely not. It does not work that way with God. How did we know that? <clears throat> I'll quote you something from the homily of St. Isaac the Syrian. St. Isaac the Syrian is one 
of the very famous fathers of the church, and he was the one that Pope Carolus used to read in his writings, like Pope Carolus used to read the Bible, and the one writing he used to read with the Bible all the time is the writings of St. Isaac the Syrian. Just telling you how important that is. In that homily, he says, you know, very wonderful things. He says, The soul that loves God finds rest only in God. If you don't remember anything we said today, just remember this one sentence. Think about it later on. Because it's a very difficult sentence. I'll say it again. The soul that loves God finds rest only in God. Just keep this in mind. First, lose yourself from all external bonds, and then you will be able to bind your heart to God. What do you do first? Lose yourself from all external bonds, and then you will be able to bind your heart to God. Because the being bound to God is preceded by the being loosed from matter. After an infant is weaned, he is given bread to eat. And the man who wishes to progress in things divine must first be weaned from the world, like an infant from his mother's breast. What he's trying to say is, if you ever wait for that right time to come, it will never come. You have to empty first. And when you empty, then the heart will be attracted, will be bound to God. But if you want something uh, to happen uh, only inside miraculously, it's not going to happen. He said, first, lose yourself from the matters of the world. That's the opposite of what the devil usually tells us. Tell us, when circumstances become better, you'll be closer to God. When God works in your life, you'll be closer. When something happens, you'll be closer. You know, I'm waiting for something that will never happen. Because the very first step is to lose myself first from this bonds of the world. The bonds of the world are not the, the bad stuff. It's the busyness of this world. It's the things that we do day after day. God says, release this. Or St. Isaac is saying, release this from your heart and then you will be able to bind yourself with God. Do you think every day, every day of my life, am I being loosed and separating, separating from the world or am I being attached more day after day? Think about it. Unless I intentionally wanted to empty and separate that the world is outside of me, I can do everything from outside, but the heart is a sacred place only for God. And I will repeat the first sentence one more time. The soul that loves God finds rest only in God. But as long as it's full of these things of the word, unless it empties intentionally day after day, our hearts are heavy, heavy, earthly, can never love God. As long as there is other love, there are a lot of attractions. I'm telling him, attract me, draw me. How will he attract me? I'm already attracted to many other things. Unless I disable these attractions day after day. Letting go of these things is not easy. It's a constant process of being weaning, weaning out. Cutting off. And when you empty... Things become difficult and tough. But if you endure, then he will attract and he will fill. And then, and only then, the heart will be light enough to run after him. We're answering, how can I run? So the first thing was, huh, I have to empty first. You know, so God can attract me, so my heart can be uh, light and run. The second is directing my heart towards God. What does that mean? So the first step is to empty. But when I empty, 
What's in my heart? There's nothing. So there's loneliness. There are needs. You know, there's emptiness. If you are in this loneliness and emptiness, blessed are you because you're ready. But there is one step that is missing to direct your heart to love God. Because my heart wants to love earthly things, things that I can touch, things that I can feel, people. I want to be attracted to anything and everything earthly. But if I tell my heart, love God, when I force myself to pray, it's great. But this from the outside. But as I force myself to pray, I tell my heart, be attracted to God. Love God. As I stay here in the church for a long time in prayer, and from inside, like I, I'm bored, I'm tired, I'm sick, I want to sleep, I want to eat. What do I tell my heart? Love God. My heart be attracted to God. Direct yourself towards God. Believe it or not, this is something uh, that was said many times. Direct your heart words. God, teach your heart to love God. Look at this verse. He says, incline my heart to your testimonies and not to covetousness. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things. Amil qalbi ila shahadatak. He's not telling him, just turn my heart. As I'm asking God to turn my heart, I'm telling my heart, redirect your path. You're still earthly. You're still worldly. You're st you don't enjoy spiritual things yet. Love God, my heart. You know why our church repeats things a lot, repeats prayer? You know, like my Lord Jesus Christ, you know, have mercy on me, or uh, my, my Lord Jesus Christ, or the name of Jesus. You know what is that? What is that doing? It's teaching my heart, directing my heart, believe it or not. Tikrari alim shittar. So I'm, I'm trying to teach my heart. It's okay, because this is my heart. This is what my heart is. It's heavy, it's worldly, it's earthly. Teaching my heart. It's exactly like a mother teaching her children to do good things. So the mother is teaching her, her children to eat vegetables. Okay? Good. She can force them, she can give them incentive, but there is a goal she, she has in her mind. I can force them now, but I can never force them tomorrow. So what do, what do I need to do? I want them to love vegetables, hopefully like vegetables, so they can eat it in the future. So the goal is not just to force them to eat, not just to force myself to pray, but direct my heart to love God and godly things and spiritual things because the heart is heavy and earthly and worldly. And all of this, like a mother teaching her immature children. That's the condition of my heart. And that's how I keep running when I keep directing my heart day after day. Last thing I will say is <clears throat> the goal has to be clear to me. The goal, I have to redirect myself to the goal of my spiritual life day after day, which is the love of God, God and Him alone. That is the goal. The goal is not to be a good person or a good Christian. The goal is not to have a good life, but the goal is to love God. That is the goal. And when I set my heart on that goal, I will grow, I will run towards Him. I will be attracted to him. I'll conclude with this verse of St. Paul. Do, not, do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. How do you obtain? Run towards the goal. Keep the prize in front of your eyes. He says, and everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now do you do it to obtain a perishable crown? but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it 
into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Sir, I keep my eyes towards the goal all the time. Even I bring my body in under subjection because I could lose my way. That's St. Paul. He said, I may be disqualified. لستم تعلمون الذين يرقدون في الميدان جميعهم يرقدون يرقدون يعني يجرون ولكن واحد يأخذ الجعالة الجيز هكذا أرقدوا لكي تنالوا كل من يجاهد يضبط نفسه في كل شيء أما أولئك فلكي يأخذوا إكليلا يفنى وأما نحن فإكليلا لا يفنى إذا أنا أرقد أجري يعني هكذا كأنه ليس عن غير يقين هكذا أضارب كأني لست أضرب الهواء بل أقمع جسدي وأستعبده حتى بعد ما كرست الآخرين لا أصير أنا نفسي Marfudan. He said, if I don't run, and if I don't have the prize in front of me, and if I do not discipline my body and bring it into subjection, I, Paul, will be disqualified. If Paul, St. Paul, needs to run, how much running we need to do. I pray for myself and all of you, that God would put in our hearts the sense of urgency and would move not only our practices towards Him, but move our hearts towards Him day after day, that would be attracted to Him. And when we are attracted to Him, we will run after Him. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Uh, now we will have some time for uh, prayer. Uh, uh, before uh, the, the, the 12, uh, the new year, and then uh, after midnight, we will say Happy New Year, and then we will start the liturgy. So let's stand up, and I will start with a few songs, and then uh, the